Howdy folks, John here. Today's video is for all you OMP M1 owners, specifically if you're looking for additional LiPo packs for your trusty little M1. As many know, I've been using Gen's Ace LiPos for years in my larger helicopters and consider Gen's Ace one of the best LiPo brands on the market in terms of quality, value and performance. So I was very happy to find these little guys specifically for the M1. I'll test them out both on the bench and up in the air to give you a better idea of the overall quality and performance. As usual, links are in the description if you want to check out these Gen Zace LiPos for your own M1 or any Gen Zace LiPo pack for your other RC aircraft. If you're new to RC helicopters and have lots of questions, feel free to check out my website at rchelicopterfun.com where you'll find lots of helpful information covering all aspects of this amazing hobby. Let's get started. So we'll start with a comparison between the Gen Zace packs and the OMP ones. Here's the actual product number for the Gen Zace. And as you can see, it's a 2S rated at 60C max discharge rate. Comes with a little manual. Gen Zace manuals are really good on uh, lipo care. And what do we have here? A cute little 2S battery. So as you can see right off the bat, it's rated at 400 milliamp hours. Let's measure it up. So it is about 41 long. Width is about 19, 19 and a half millimeters. And depth is about 12 and a half millimeters. So very similar size, just a little bit smaller. And how does it fit? Slides in really nice. Not too tight, not too loose, just right. There's got to be a joke in there somewhere. So just for reference, an OMP pack is about 21 grams, 0.7 ounces. And the Gen's Ace, 18 grams, 0.6 ounces, so also lighter. First thing I do with any new LiPo pack is I check the out-of-box voltage just to make sure it was in a storage state when they shipped it. 47% charged, that's fine. 3.844 on cell 1, 3.844 on cell 2. Can't get them better than that, can you? Let's try this one. Looks like the same thing. 3.844, 3.844. Consistency. Now, the next thing I do on new LiPo packs is I always check and record the new internal resistance values. And then I've got something to gauge the health of the pack as it ages. And I have a page on my website that goes over everything you need to know about internal resistance, how you can use it and whatnot. If it's something you're not familiar with, I'll link to it below in the description or up in the little card doodad. So we're at 66 and 68. I just round it up. Now what I'll do with those numbers, I can either write them on the pack, but I just make little labels on my label maker for these tiny ones. And I put them somewhere on the pack that they're likely not to get rubbed off easy. And because these slide into the helicopter, I don't want to put them on the sides or the bottom. So I'll just put them on the end. The other Gen's Ace pack was very close to the same internal resistance, 67 and 65. And that's very similar to the new values on the uh, original OMP ones as well. So our next battery test is going to be to check out the capacity and overall performance of the packs under load. When I fly my OMP M1, I'm usually flying it in the governed uh, middle head speed for my sport flying style and I will get exactly around four minutes taking the packs no lower than an 80% discharge state. You can pause the video and look at my math here to see how I did this but basically I'm taking 80% of the stated capacity of the pack 350 milliamp hours so my 80% discharged capacity is 280 milliamp hours if I'm getting four minute flights that comes out to an average of 4.2 amps I'm drawing out of the pack as I'm flying. And assuming the Gen Zace are actually 400 milliamp hours, I should be able to get four and a half minutes of flight time with that same current load. 
to double check the math here that we just did on the draw, I thought I'd just see what this little guy will draw in my idle up mode. Just look at the current meter here, switch into idle up one, where I normally fly. And we'll run a relatively medium pitch. So yeah, right around four amps, give or take. Now that we've got that 4.2 amp average draw established in my idle up one flight mode, we can use that number to do some proper battery calculation. Now I could just go out and fly the heli and give you my thoughts, which I will do at the end of the video, but the human brain makes a piss poor measurement device, especially mine. Now subjective reasoning comes into play. I'm a Gen Zays fanboy, right? So what I've done is I've got the little Gen Zays pack hooked up to channel one, the OMP up to channel two. This is a fairly new pack as well. So they're fairly equal in age and they're both fully charged. I've got a temperature probe on each pack so we can also monitor the temperature to see if one is getting grossly warmer than the other. I've got the termination voltage set at an 80% discharged state under load. So when it hits 80% discharged, they will automatically shut off and we'll be able to determine how accurate the uh, capacity ratings are of 400 milliamp hours and 350. So as you can see, they are fully charged. Um, geez, balanced up nice. So we're gonna start the uh, Gen Zays first. I can't start them both at the same time. So just be aware of that. The number on this side is gonna be lagging a little bit. Lipo. Discharge, yes. Lipo discharge, yes. Okay, so uh, what we wanna really look at here uh, is this bottom number. That's the milliamp hours that have been sucked out of the pack. So with the uh, Gen Zace, assuming it's 400 milliamp hours, capacity at 80% discharged, this should shut off around 320 milliamp hours. And the OMP, 80% discharged on a 350, it should shut off around 280 milliamp hours. There's our load on both, 4.19, 4.2 amps. Okay, we're at about three minutes into it. The uh, cell imbalance is almost identical on both, around 19, 18 millivolts. Cell voltages, the Gen Zace is just slightly higher right now, even though we started it first. Temperature, almost 28, 28 and a half. How are the internal resistances doing? 35, 32 and 28. So fairly close internal resistance as well. Okay, we're over four minutes now. So Gen's Ace has stopped, and so has the OMP. And look at that. So 400 milliamp hours, uh, I don't think so. I'd call it 350 as well. But since we need more than a sample size of one, we will do two more. Okay, we're three minutes into our test and things are looking fairly even, Steven. Our temperatures are almost the same. OMP is showing a little bit hotter, but again, that could just be error in the sensor. I'm not worried about a couple of degrees. Internal resistance, 35 and 34. Let's call it 36 and 35, actually. And on this one, 32 and 28. So very close internal resistance values. Even the voltage of the cells, fairly even. Higher imbalance on this one during the discharge. We're at 17 millivolts. Only four or five millivolts on the Gen Zays. There we're at four minutes on the uh, OMP. 413 on the... So Gen Zays finished first. Of course, we started it first. And again, the OMP beat it out slightly. Pretty minor, 
but uh, yeah, calling calling the Gen Zace 400 milliamp hour capacity, I think that's uh, overestimating things a little bit. Pretty much, I would call these identical. I'd call this a 350 as well. One last test before we go for our flight, we're going to do some thrust testing. So for our thrust test, what I thought I'd do is I'd mount the little OMP M1 on a scale and I'd pull full negative pitch, minus 12 degrees on this one, at full head speed, 100% RPM, and see how much thrust weight is applied to the scale. And then we can compare both packs. And these are both fully charged. We'll just uh, check that out real quick. So 98%. There's our two cell voltages, and same with the O, same with the Gen's Ace, 98%. So nicely balanced up, nicely charged. So we'll do the OMP one first, and the scale is going to be reading in grams. So we've zeroed the scale out, so it's not measuring the heli weight, we're just going to measure the thrust. And like I said, we're going to idle up two, which is full head speed, pull full negative collective, and see what this uh, weight registers at. Pulling full negative. 450, 460, 478. Wow. Pretty extreme test. I really wouldn't recommend doing this, putting a lot of stress on the rotor head doing this, but uh, hey, all for science, right? So 478, almost 480 grams. <laughs> That's impressive on such a light little helicopter. Lost. Oh, this heli is just over 100 grams. Impressive lift to uh, weight ratio. Okay, now the Gen's Ace Pack. Certainly slides in easier because it is a little bit smaller. And plug them in. Telemetry recovered. Everything's still zeroed out. Here we go. Shit is about to get real. Coming up to full RPM. There we go. Pulling full negative. 478, 480, 488, 490. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> so let's call that one 490. So 480 to 490. Again, so evenly matched. Now, both these are, both these packs are good. Uh, you can, you know, physically when you look at them side by side, you can definitely tell the little Gen's Ace is a wee bit smaller. But I'm going to call these packs pretty much even Steven. We'll go for a flight now with the Gen's Ace. Well, I'll fly both, but I'll just show the Gen's Ace one uh, just to give you some thoughts. So I've got the Gen's Ace pack in here now. Just before getting to it though, <laughs> just want to mention how great this little M1 flies. I haven't flown it much this spring because we've had such a cold and windy spring. Kind of forgot how smooth and stable it is. And we've got quite a windy day today as well. Just eats up the wind. Amazing flying little helicopters. So I'm going to do some pitch pumps. Can't really tell much difference between the Gen's Ace pack in here now, and the OMPs that I flew before this flight. Power seems good. Again, this is just sport flying. I don't have my highest head speed. This is my medium head speed. This is what I'm comfortable with. Fairly gentle sport flying. But the Gen's Ace pack feels good. You know, that's subjective, of course. Seems to have a little more punch later on in the flight here. 
flying almost a couple, no, probably a minute and a half now, looks like, looking at the timer. Yeah, it just seems to have a little more punch. Again, totally subjective. I think the best, best things with these Gen Zace packs is it gives us um, more battery options. And that's the very best thing about them. Plus, we can get them locally. Here, anywhere where I live. So, don't have to order them from the U.S., which always costs a fortune in import fees. Because we don't have an OMP dealer here in Canada, at least that I know of. Man, this thing flies nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it has more. I would have stuffed it in the ground there. It just seems to have a little more punch at the end of the flight as the voltage is decaying. Oh, yeah, I probably would have stuffed that one in. Can't believe I saved that. Anyway, if you're thinking of getting the Gen's Ace, links again below in the description. Thanks for watching, folks. Until next time. Happy flights.